Welcome back again. My name is Chris Richter. Great to have you here. If you haven't already, check in in the comments the courses that I have there for you. Some great courses on using the Moodle LMS and we're going to look at creating more complex math formats using the tools that are available in the Moodle LMS. And in this case, I'm going to put it inside a quiz question for you just to make that a bit easier and make a bit more sense of where you might actually use it rather than just have it in the content. So I've created a math quiz currently with no questions in there. We're going to select add and a new question. And all we need to put in this one is maybe a multiple choice and choose add. We'll call this question, we'll just call it question one. That's fine for now. And then we're going to put our question in here. So I've picked out an example question, which is simplify seven to the minus five by seven squared over. 7 cubed times 7 to the minus 8. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to remember back to uh, high school maths when we had to work this out. But what I'm going to show you is how we can put this equation into Moodle so that you can use this type of these type of questions in your quizzes. And then how we can put that in the answers as well. We'll just go step by step through and I'll see where we end up. In our question text, we simply have to put in simplify the following equation. You may or may not have noticed this, but inside most Moodle platforms, there is a thing called the Equation Editor. When we click on the Equation Editor, it comes up with this, which looks a little bit scary. But if we click on Advanced, you'll see something that looks a little bit more familiar for you. In there, what we're looking for is something that is sort of similar uh, to this particular layout just here so that we can put that in and see how we can recreate that same format. Now, the easiest one that I find anyway is to choose this one just here, which is just basically a fraction. And it puts in some text, which is slash FRAC, then it has A, B plus C. Now we don't need B plus C in there. We're just gonna make that B just for the moment. But what we now need to do is take this top part here that's going to be at the top of the fraction and put it inside the first few brackets take the second part and put it into the second part of the two brackets. So we've got seven minus five. Now, when it comes to times, if I put X in there, I'll show you what happens when we put X in there. Uh, it may or may not be what you want because X is actually uh, X as in X, Y, Z that you would use in part of a formula where you do say five X equals or 5x instead of times. So we need to put in, you can see the example of the, you can see the example down the bottom here, seven minus five x. We don't want seven minus five x, we want seven minus five or dash five, seven to the minus five times. So we need to replace that with time. So if we go back and get rid of that, get rid of that x, and we put in times, it actually puts in the time symbol. So now that's looking much more logical. The other bit we haven't done is seven minus five. If we go across here with all of our symbols and advanced things here, what we're looking for is where we can make it into a superscript, uh, which is where it brings the minus five up to the top. So the symbol or character used to make this into a superscript to make it seven to the minus five is actually an arrow up, which is shift six on my computer. And if I have a look at that now down the bottom, you can see it's made the minus move up. If I logically think, if I put a second one in there, that it will move the five up as well, well it doesn't actually do that. It changes it, uh, it causes an error. So what I need to do is put the, the minus five into those curly brackets there as a group. And you'll see now it's brought them both up as seven to the minus five. We have our times in there. So that slash times is working, so that's all good. The next one is seven again. And again, we want to do the uh, squared now. So to do squared, we use the shift number six, which is that upper arrow. Uh, put in our brackets, because we're gonna put in number two. Technically, I didn't need the brackets because we're only putting a number two in. There's no minus to go in front of that. So we don't need the extra brackets that I just showed you. So we've got seven to the minus five times seven squared. Now I can go back 
and put in an extra space in there, but you'll see that as far as it's concerned, it doesn't treat those as spaces. So it just cleans, cleans those out. Now, what do we do with our second one? It's basically the same sort of thing. We've got seven, uh, up arrow number three, and then we put in the word slash times to put in the time symbol. We can get rid of the B and we've got seven again. And this time we put our up arrow. Uh, we put our two brackets in this time. So we're going to put the minus eight into that. And we now have the, the nice seven to the minus five times seven squared over seven cubed times seven to the minus eight or negative eight. We can now save that equation. And this is what it looks like inside the platform. But when we save it, so if we go down to, uh, I need to put some choices in here because this is the answer. So I'm just going to put one, two, three, and four in for our four different answers. I'll save the changes. Sorry, one of those has to be 100%, doesn't it? Make one of those the correct answer. Save changes. And if we preview our quiz now, you can see that our quiz is simplify the following equation. 7 minus 5 times 7 squared. So that looks like the correct one we've got over here. So now we've got to put in our possible answers and our correct answer. So our correct answer is 7 squared. Is the correct answer to this one. So we're just going to go back in again. This time, we'll go and edit our question. So for our correct answer, we're going to put it in here, but because we now know how to create these fractions, we can actually copy that, use part of that slash bracket FRAC, or we can go down to our editor here, because this is our correct answer. We can choose just in here, our equation editor, go into our equation editor, and the answer that we want, or the equation that we want in there is just seven, squared which looks like that and then we click save equation and that's how the equation appears in there for the answer seven squared so we're just going to copy that move that down to our other answers and these are our answers that are incorrect and so we've got an incorrect answer for our second one here is seven to the minus two so remember we put the bracket in minus in the other bracket go down to our third answer which is uh, 7 to the power of 4, 7 cubed. Then our last one is minus 4. So we just put in our bracket, minus 4, bracket, get rid of the 2. If we now save changes and preview, we now have our question, simplify the equation, and then we have our possible answers, 7 to the minus 2, 7 squared, uh, seven cubed and we choose which one's correct and we have the correct answers But the last step of this that you may be wondering about is how do I get all of this in here? What do I do with it? And there's a couple of extra symbols in here. You might not have seen before this one here We're going to show you how to add that in as well so I'm going to make this simple because this is the example of the process of you know how they actually achieved this answer and you may want that to be part of your and not part of the question, but part of the response that they get. So if we go back into our question, and in our um, in general feedback here, is shown to the student after they've completed the question. So after they've completed it, we could actually say an example of how this could be calculated is, and then we can go in and put in our response. So firstly, simplify the numerator, M, this is where we need to you know, change everything to either be uh, superscript or subscript or depending on what it is. But we can do this the simple way without having to go into do the other calculations, without going into the formula or equation editor. We can just go to here where it has the superscript option and change all of these to be superscript. And that's just using basic HTML then. It's nothing overly complicated or complex. So all of these, so we've got x to the m times x to the n, 
equals and if we wanted to change these so that the characters actually made a bit more sense so that the the times and the x's we could change the fonts uh, or could change those characters so they are easy to read but that's probably something you can decide whether you do or not just that you need to be able to show that it is a different character you can use a different font as well but that's not easy to do in the default Moodle because it doesn't give you a choice of fonts we can go X to the M and just bold that and that will help differentiate which part of the formula is times and which is an actual X but good practice really is to grab all of this and put it inside the equation editor and make use of the equation editor instead so we go X to the M times we take that out and we put in actual times put in our other symbol our symbol again put the brackets in so this should start to look familiar to you to you and now you can see that it is correct xn xm plus n and that's matching this one over here which looks much much better let me save that equation then we have the next part down here and you'll notice that it actually copied that symbol in for me when I copied that over from uh, a Google Doc over here, that symbol was actually already added in as part of it. If you are struggling to find that symbol, you can go into the equation editor, have a look through the symbols that are appearing in here. So they've got the different arrows and you can choose the right arrow. Save that. Get rid of this other example in there. And that way when we save it, if I just run down and save changes and preview, you can see that you know, if I choose uh, choose this answer, there we go. So there's our general feedback, and you can see now your answer is correct. An example of how this could be calculated is, and we've started off the explanation of that calculation. Uh, in this case, and you can see that extra symbol in there has now gone in, and these have all been updated as well. So we could go through the rest of that, but I think I've given you a good example of how that all works and you can continue on and add the rest in. But hopefully that's been a really useful bit of information for you on how you can put equations inside a Moodle quiz. And you can put fairly complex equations in there. If you're not sure, check out the text notation. Look for text notation in the Moodle docs and it will give you a really good explanation of how you can create each of these different fractions, equations, and what the conventions are to be able to create them. Really, really helpful, really useful, and you can create some amazing quiz questions, uh, including all of the you know, square root type functions as well are all in there, so that's useful. Uh, this is the fractions one that you've already had a go of. Then you can have embedded uh, fractions inside brackets as well, combined, all of that sort of thing. So I can show you how all the brackets work ellipses and there's some more advanced stuff as well in the bottom so i hope that's been useful to you my name is chris richter please check out all the courses at the bottom in the comments uh, like subscribe because it'd be great to have you along with some more of the videos later and i'll talk to you again soon